recalled, he'll be at the top of the second part of the ballot where the other candidates running for the mayor's office will be. And there will be an alphabetical order, remember that. Uh, it's not a random pick, as uh, some of us wanted to see, whereby candidates on the second part of the ballot would be randomly picked and uh, placed on that ballot. What's going to happen also is that if he's not recalled, you won't even need to go to this, well, you will go to the second part of the ballot, but if uh, the count shows that he is not recalled, uh, the second part of the ballot, as I understand, will not be disclosed. It won't even be counted. So the night of the 16th should be ra rather quick. It's, uh, it's only for, uh, you know, we might say the mayor's race, uh, special election. And that was brought about because of uh, a recall of the mayor. So that aside, we'll be talking about that a little, and we'll talk about the uh, TIF agreement that's come about uh, recently uh, in regards to Amazon and some other topics. But before we get to that, in a general discussion, I have uh, Michael Mioza uh, with me, a city councilor, uh, for a number of years now, who's uh, running for the mayor's position. And Michael, uh, maybe you can give uh, the uh, audience a little bit of uh, your 100-day plan. Well, first off, Richard, thank you for having me on, CJ and Dan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, um, and any opportunity I can to uh, let people know what my platform is, I'd like to say I take that opportunity. I did come up with a 100-day, and I call it an action plan, um, because this is going to get my administration going right from day one. I've identified five areas based on input from constituents uh, over time. Uh, you know, I've had a front row seat over the last three years as to what is ailing this city. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, We've heard a lot of discussion about the city's finances. Uh, we know that um, it's really an, un an un unhealthy fiscal climate that we live we're living in. Uh, we've raised taxes, we've raised water rates, we've instituted new fees. But all, that all being said, there's not a comfort level with this budget. So one of my first objects with objectives will be to have a full forensic audit done of our city finances. I had a conversation with the state auditor's office this past week, um, got the scope of what the audit would consist of, and they may not necessarily do it. Uh, they, um, they have discretionary powers whether they'll do it or not. But they gave me the idea of the cost, uh, which they believe would be anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000 to do that. Now the reason, why do I want to do that? Well, I want to understand where we stand. And I want to be able to communicate that to the public so that they understand where exactly we're at. Because if there is a need to raise taxes, fees, um, we need to understand why, we need, why we're going to have to do that. Um, so that's going to be one of the, my first things. The second thing is my, I'm going to have my financial team. One of the things that really troubles me is the state of our stabilization fund, our rainy day fund. Uh, it's depleted. It's got about $136,000 in there in that account, a uh, municipality of our size is supposed to have almost 10%. We're supposed to have millions of dollars in there. Okay, and it's just like having a savings account at home. If an emergency uh, arises, uh, you have funds to um, turn to if you need it. The other thing, it helps with your bond rating. The more stable, the more funds you have, the better bond rating you can, you can receive. So those two things right out of the gate, have an audit done, see where we stand. Start, a, start, come up with a process or plan to fund that stabilization fund, that rainy day fund. The next thing that we hear a lot about, Richard, is, is the potholes, the deterring con condition of our streets and our sidewalks, particularly around our parks. You know, it's a basic fundamental quality of life issue that we need to figure out how we're going to address. And again, I understand that money's mm -hmm. tight, but you have to have a plan. Okay, and people need to know what that plan is. So what are the 10 worst streets, the 15, whatever it is that we can tackle using whatever funds, Chapter 90 monies, CDA monies, let's tell people what streets are gonna be repaired, when they're gonna re be repaired, and not tell people you're on some uh, list that I don't even think exists, you're on the list. Well, what list, where am I? Where, where's my street, are we number 100, are we number one, where are we at? So let's communicate that to people so they exactly know. If they are one, number 100, at least they know where they stand. 
okay? So then uh, the next thing uh, would be to um, figure out how we're gonna handle our solid waste problem. Okay, we right now we are using uh, allied waste as a transfer station, but there may be better opportunities. And I know people don't like to hear task force because it's gotten a bad name in recent years because task force have been created and nothing's been done. My task force will be actionable. Within 90 days, I want a report. And whether or not I like what's in that report, um, I, I want to get feedback from the, those interested parties and s develop a plan how we handle our solid waste moving forward. So those are kind of some of the highlights of my 100-day plan, Richard. Good, good. Uh, sounds good, uh, Michael. And uh, I'm glad you, you had time to stop by. Uh, we're going to get into uh, now a general panel discussion. Uh, is there something you want to add quickly? Yeah, just quickly. This is my action plan going in. I might walk in on day one and find that this needs to go out the window because there are other priorities. But based on what I know at this point in time, these uh, would be the priorities I'd work on in my first 100 days. Well, okay. Uh, Michael Muir is a candidate uh, for uh, mayor, December 16th, remember. Uh, CJ, uh, Dan, welcome on board. Always uh, regulars here on a panel show. Uh, Dan uh, started this show uh, a while back. Uh, you're almost like a producer now. Yeah, well. You're the one that uh, wanted to get this going. Yeah, no. Well, we had it before, and it went on hiatus for a little while, and I thought it was uh, good to bring back. So. Good for you. Well, all right. Now, we talked, uh, we talked quite a bit before the show uh, about uh, a recent uh, uh, TIF agreement. And uh, TIF stands for what? Taxpayer Incentive? Tax Incentive Funding. And uh, well, there's there's, uh, there's different opinions about uh, whether uh, TIFs should be granted or not. Uh, what companies uh, should uh, uh, be allowed to have them? And along came uh, Amazon, uh, told everyone it's going to create a thousand jobs. Well, uh, what if you 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 read the uh, the agreement uh, before the show started, uh, CJ? Uh, can you spotlight some of uh, some of the things that? Uh, well, I've actually been reading this TIF agreement since the TIF board meeting, and I do it very, very delicately. I read through each individual paragraph, but it's very interesting to see in this one because, first off, people said in Fall River that I am totally against Amazon coming here and I'm against jobs. That's the furthest thing from the truth. I'm into transparency. I want the people of Fall River to know exactly what they're giving away and what they're getting back. Now, a couple of misrepresentations were made by uh, the Fall River Office of Economic Disaster, Disruption, whatever you want to call it, because they're not development, that's for sure. One of which was Amazon was buying this land. That is an outright lie, an outright lie, and that was stated at the TIF board meeting. Um, I didn't have the, the time to clarify it, but... So Amazon is not going to be the owner of the land? No, and in my conversations with... Now, why do they qualify for uh, a, a, a tax um, uh, deduction? Matter of fact, we might say an exemption. You told me before the show that for the first four years, they're not going to be paying a dime in taxes. Right. They but they're not exemption. the owners of the land. Right. They get a 100% exemption on, on the first four years on real and personal property. The personal property is like every other business in the city pays. That's their inventory, their light fixtures, their office equipment, fixtures, their office supplies. All of that is considered personal property, and that's tax. Okay. My problem with this TIF was the fact that they said Amazon is going to buy the land. This is the first problem I had. When in the TIF itself it says that the company Amazon plans to designate a purchaser for the property. That means there is going to be somebody from outside of Amazon, somebody who is not connected to Amazon, who is going to buy this property, and in turn is going to gain the TIF on the real estate. So the purchase of the property, what you're saying, uh, based on uh, the agreement you have in your hand, uh, will not have to pay taxes on that property based on what the TIF says for the first four years. For the first four years, except for the base exemption. And that's not Amazon. Right, that's this not Amazon. This is a third party. Right, except for the base exemption, which I believe is $96,000 a year, which will come to Fall River. Okay, my problem is this. Tonight, this is Wednesday that we're taping this show, there will be a meeting in Freetown on this same tip. 
But do you know what happened in Freetown that didn't happen in Fall River? In Freetown tonight, the citizens are going to speak on this, Tim, and the citizens are going to vote on it. Well, let me ask you this then, uh, because I know you're very concerned about this, uh, Tiff, along with Dan and uh, n a number of other people, and I'm sure uh, uh, Michael. Uh, did you have, uh, did you read this uh, TIF agreement before the meeting of the Fall River City Council? Yes, I before did. Before it. So you knew then what you're telling us today. Correct. And what I said this morning. And uh, what you're uh, intimating is that you would have brought up these questions to the City Council, but for the fact you weren't able to address the Council. Correct. Because the City Council, in their ultimate wisdom, decided after a two minute and 11 second meeting to pass a TIF, table everything else, and Move on Dan, you want it? You, yeah, my, you, you want to get in? My, my issue with TIFs in general, most of uh, the ones that I've seen over the last 20 years, and I said this last night before the council, uh, I can't think of a. First of all, there are no. Well, you were able to address the council? Last night, yeah, because it was the regular meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, this, uh, tax increment financing agreement, otherwise known as the TIF, was approved at a special meeting just to avoid public input. I think one of the first things that should happen uh, the next time the city council does its rule changes is that public input be allowed at every city council meeting so there's no ducking of special meetings and things like that. But my general issue <clears throat> with this TIF and most TIFs is this. There's never any guarantees as to how many jobs are gonna be created, never any guarantees as to how many Fall River residents will be hired. That's two major flaws <clears throat> that I see in this TIF and in most TIFs in my last 20 years or so of being politically active. We've had a number of TIFs uh, whereby they were, they were null and void, uh, <coughs> uh, and a number of TIFs, as soon as the company uh, took advantage of all the tax breaks, they went bye-bye Fall River. Let me, um, Michael, you're on a, are you on a TIF? I am on a TIF. Okay, let me ask you this question. Uh, it was raised by uh, CJ and mm -hmm. uh, uh, indirectly by Dan. Um, why, why would the... Um, uh, the TIF Council is or committee, not TIF board, TIF board uh, appointed by the mayor. That's correct. Uh, why would they not want to have some sort of uh, time for input by uh, concerned citizens? Well, um, let me just address uh, a couple things. Number one, uh, I am on the TIF board. I'm not sure if uh, it's the mayor or the city council president that uh, makes those assignments, but there's at least two representation represent representatives from the City Council on the TIF board. Uh, and I agree with CJ, transparency is very, very important. Uh, in terms of who owns the property, um, we're still gonna get tax revenue from that in the future. Uh, so I understand what you're saying. You, you just want people to know <coughs> that Amazon is not gonna be the owner of the uh, property. Danny's point in terms of guaranteed jobs or a percentage of jobs, I also agree with. Now when we voted on this, and I. Let me take this issue first. When we voted on this, and you were there, CJ, yep. as a member of the press, this was presented to us. This was a done deal, basically. Mm -hmm. I, gave in, I gave my input as you were there. Yep. I didn't really care for the structure of the, uh, the four years of no um, tax, you know, tax revenue. And so we, I talked about that. But I also realized that no, it wasn't going to be changed. Um, they had already worked with Freetown. Allegedly, this mirrors the Freetown uh, TIF agreement. So. In terms of the the, uh, the meeting to uh, to vote on this by the city council, I don't set the meeting meeting date. Uh, I think the council president. I can't speak for the council president. Uh, I'm assuming that you want to expedite this, um, but I also agree there should have been public input. Let me. I uh, believe. I don't care if we if we had to sit there until midnight listening to people, and there would have been people pro and con. Yeah. And I, I really don't that's think our job. I don't think it was a, a, a problem with people being con against jobs. I think, like myself, I had a problem with the fact that this was presented at a meeting which was supposed to be subject to the open meeting law. 
And the meeting room was changed to a small conference room where the public could not attend. There was no broadcast of that meeting. Nobody knew. And it did not speak clearly to transparency. It, cleared to a, it spoke to a backdoor deal. And I listened to everyone on that council. And I understand why the councils did it. After the meeting, I was approached by just about every member of the city council. And I was told, this is about jobs. We can't vote against jobs. And we couldn't say anything else because our back was against the wall. Let me, let if me, we had let said me anything else, it would have gone against us. If we vote for it, it goes against us. So we couldn't win. Let me ask, you, let me ask you this, uh, CJ, because you mentioned it before. Uh, do you think this is uh, a violation of the open meeting law? Yes, I do, and I filed an open meeting law violation uh, complaint. And okay. I gave it to the TIF board, and they have, you know, 14 days to reply, and I'm still waiting on that. And, and the basis of your, your complaint is uh, that the public was not uh, allowed to speak? No, what, what, that the public was not noti clearly notified. Okay, they no notification. The room to the mayor's conference room. And that is kind of a small place. It's a small place, number and, one. And, and a public, two, and a public that's not the place that it was posted to be held. Oh, and it was changed. Oh, okay, okay. And, uh, okay, Michael, go ahead. And, and what's interesting, something CJ me uh, mentioned, the voters of uh, Freetown, they'll be meeting tonight. Yes. And that's ultimate public input. Exactly. They're gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get the to town the meeting. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I know we have a different. They'll be listening to. I know we have a different government here where we're the representatives, but talk about the mm -hmm. ultimate in public input is going to occur tonight. In, in let me uh, let me ask you, uh, Michael. Um, uh, uh, CJ is, is found, you know, a very interesting uh, aspect of uh, this uh, this agreement, which is the uh, fact that Amazon will not own the land. And the owner of the land, who is who is a third party, they're not part of a, uh, w an agreement between Amazon and the city, but the owner <coughs> uh, of this land uh, is going to be able to benefit uh, from this agreement by not paying or coming in under the uh, the tax aspect well, and not paying taxes for the first four years. Right, but the, well, I, well, I don't think we do know, and I don't know, so I don't. I'm, this could just be a. Uh, an LLC to to Amazon. So what they're saying it's not Amazon, but it's it's a company, you know, a break off company. And I don't know that. And I actually do know that. Okay. Because of course I don't go into anything <laughs> blindfolded. And I've already been called out for contacting Amazon. But Mike Grello and I now have a good relationship. We talk on the phone. We email back and forth. I did not bring the email with me, but I'm more than happy to provide it. That Amazon does not now, nor will they ever own the land or the building. They hire developers in the local area to build the building and the needs that they have. They put in millions of dollars of, of improvements into that building and they lease it back from the developer. So Amazon already knows they're gonna do that. They do that all over the country and that's the way they do business, which is not unheard of for a business to do. No. Right, well that part is, that part is, it doesn't seem to be questionable. Right. But what, what seems to raise the, uh, the ire of some people is that a person not privy to this contract, not named in the contract, an unknown, is going to get a tax exemption on the land, the land that Amazon doesn't own, the land that this third party is going to own, and they're gonna get a 100% tax exemption for the first four years plus the, the additional years involved. Uh, that I, and I'm not sure I see the problem with that, to be honest with okay. you. Okay. I mean, because it's really, I, and I understand transparency, mm -hmm. so that's what you're looking for here. But at the end of the day, if Amazon owned the land, it would still be the same TIF agreement, I believe. It would still be, we still wouldn't get the revenue. We'd still be giving, you know, 100% over the first four years. It's Amazon, this Fortune 100 company that we're, that, that's coming here. So but the owner of the land is going I mean, to... They're, they're, they're honest there. They say that, Amazon. I mean, it wasn't like it was hidden. The, the they, it's, it, it's right in the... The owner... The owner, the owner not there when Ken Fiola said that Amazon is buying this land and that we are the only city in the running for this. Were he, you not there when he stated yeah, that? Or, well, okay, yeah. now, well, he, Amazon is not only in the running with Fall River and Amazon is not buying the land. I asked that question. Exactly, whether, you whether, did. Whether we were in competition. Exactly, and he told you no. He told me no. That and, and that is not the case. And, and the other part of it is that the owner of the land is not creating any jobs. Right. And, and you know what, Richard? They just own the land. You, yeah, know, exactly. you, you know what, Richard? Dan? As, as much as all of that is disturbing to me, I could deal with that a little bit better 
if I had some language in this agreement that said any percentage, a, a, a reasonable amount, 40%, 50% of the jobs are going to Fall River, 30%, something. I, we've got nothing there. And, and so when you, when you look at this agreement as a totality, it has to raise flags all over the place. What is the benefit for Fall River? Are we that desperate for jobs that will accept crumbs? Well, you know, it, it, all right. Let me let me let me well, move. Let me, just, let let me, me say this real quick because I don't want to, want Mike to think that we're we're attacking him or anything. No, no. Um, Mike, can, Mike can take it. Don't I, worry. I, I, I spoke to Mike. Well <laughs> no, you're not you're not attacking him. And he very clearly stated to me, and this was in our first conversation, that we've looked at the demographics at Fall River. Have you? I said, oh yeah, yes, absolutely. I know the demographics very clearly. He says, so how many people in Fall River do you really think are over 18 years of age, can pass a criminal background check, can pass a drug clearance, speak and can read fluently English, and can lift 49 pounds or more on a regular basis. And I said, okay, I see your limits. So if you put any job requirements in there, we wouldn't be able to meet them from Fall River or Freetown because we don't believe the demographics are there. Okay, I want to move on to, uh, this is probably going uh, we to be getting down to the end. Yep. And um, uh, the other thing is that, uh, uh, in the uh, in the agreement, apparently uh, CJ has found that uh, there's there's in other words, if uh, if Amazon doesn't uh, hold up to its side of the agreement and decides to leave, uh, and it's already been given, uh, you might say four years of exemption, tax exemption. Uh, CJ uh, was asked if there's a, an escrow uh, amount, uh, you know, an escrow account whereby Amazon does not pay taxes, but puts the money in an escrow account, interest bearing, not trying to take anything from them. However, uh, if uh, they bolt after the third or fourth or fifth year, uh, how does the city recoup uh, its money? Amazon says, uh, you know, uh, this or that uh, problem. Are you asking me? Well, well generally speaking, right. yeah. I mean, I mean, there is a provision, and I don't recall where, that they pay, I believe, one year uh, of, of tax revenue if they decide to bolt. I mean, y you do this with a leap of faith. Uh, that's why I was looking to have the schedule flipped to give them incentive on the other end to stay, to stay so that, you know, they pay. I mean, listen, we're cash strapped. We need revenue. No, it's pay taxes up front yeah, and then up as, long as, they as long as they stay. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense well, that was economically. My, that's why we right. didn't take it, because it made sense. So that was my proposal. Yeah, that's uh, good. That because we need the money, let's get the money now, we need it. This would incent them to stay because the longer they stay. The only downside of that, I guess, would be is then now you are losing revenue. But hopefully by that time, we're in a much better place. At least we're losing it on the back end, though. Right, and not on the front end. So. So that was my uh, suggestion. That's what I. But it was. I remember that clearly. Yep. But it was pretty evident that uh, we, we this won't. had already been set in stone. And, and, and that's the problem. That's the problem with having the Office of Economic Destruction come in, because they walked in. This was a done deal. They, Kathy Ann Viveris had a special meeting with the City Council President, and when people started to show up, she closed the door. We then all walked into the conference room. These weren't even available to us. Kathy Ann left the room to get the copy, she comes back in, and then Ken Fiola, the mayor, and Kathy Ann go out, and they have a special meeting. So you think the council, you think the council needs uh, private counsel occasionally? I, I think that, oh, well, I've been saying that all along, that the city council needs private counsel. I also believe that we need to do away with the RDA and the Fall River Office of Economic Destruction. Both of them, because they're hand in hand with each other. And it's the same people yeah. that run it. You know, Richard, we've had a number of tips over the years, and, and not lately. Uh, but I can recall when Ed Lambert was in uh, serving as mayor, we passed a number of tips. Uh, Fall River, I believe, at one time was one of the highest granting TIF communities in the state of Massachusetts. We also had a number rescinded. Uh, uh, um, TJX comes to mind, AJ Wright, others. And there's never been a true analysis of how many TIFs have been passed how many jobs have been created by Fall River residents, and how much tax revenue we've lost because of all these tips over time. There's never been an analysis, and the Fall River Office of Economic Development 
I think has hurt this city overall much more than has helped it. Well, do you think the uh, the developer is gonna uh, is gonna go away with the uh, biggest basket of gold in this? Of course he is. I of course he is, and this has happened before in Fall River. We no. can look at many of the projects. And who's I mean, who's gonna who's gonna own the land? Well, that's the, it's an unnamed it's an unnamed person. It's well, it'll be developer. it'll be in a registry of deeds. Oh, it will mm -hmm. be in the registry of deeds eventually. <laughs> right. I mean, that's uh, you and, know. And then the question is that gives that think. gives up all the secrets. Right, and they said they said very clearly this land's worth five point three million dollars. Is this developer gonna pay five point three million dollars for this piece of land because that's what it's worth, or is RDA gonna do like they've done in the past and give it away for free? Okay, we're down. To, uh, this is really great. I wish it was going on longer. Uh, good questions. Uh, I want to thank my guests, uh, City Councilor Mike Mioza, running for the mayor of the city of Fall River, CJ, uh, uh, part of the press, but uh, he, uh, he, he bestows his presence on my show occasionally. And uh, yeah, you got to give your ear props to us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you, Richard. And Dan, Dan's always uh, here. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we got. Um, don't forget, uh, Friends of Cook Pond is going to have a dinner dance in May. I want to announce it now. We had a, uh, a good time uh, at the, uh, the last dance. We'll have another one in May. Any predictions? Quick. I think we're going to have a field day on December 16th, and on December 20th, we're having a Christmas party at McGovern's Board. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope people go out and vote on that day. Vote Dan? yes on recall the mayor, and then vote for the candidate of your choice. Council my O's is right here. Okay, <laughs> Dan. All right, uh, everybody, uh, thank you uh, for being on the show. And uh, I want to thank uh, Glenn. Glenn's in a boot. Glenn has just come back from a cruise. Uh, went down through the Panama Canal, Canal ended up uh, in Mexico, uh, and uh, arrived back here to do the, uh, the show. But he's been gone for two or three weeks, uh, so he's back safe with some pictures. Good for you, Glenn. Thank you for uh, being in the boot tonight, and thank you out there for watching.